I had to put some sort of clickbait style title to this video. I didn't have to, but I wanted to. I wanted to get some attention. My videos that aren't gear reviews don't get many views at all. They don't get pushed out by the algorithm and all this stuff. So that's the reason for the title of this video. Obviously, I'm not telling anyone to stop taking boring photographs. What this video is about is embracing the idea that not all photos need to be perfect. Not all photos need to be um, amazing in and of themselves. Oftentimes when you hear sports photographers, wildlife photographers, wedding photographers, any photographers that work in a situation where they're capturing something that's happening live, something that may not happen again, they talk about hit rate and how many keepers they get and all these things, which truly applies to what they do. Um, things of those, think, photography categories like that need to, need to have a photographer that that's prepared and is able to capture the events as they happen. And especially when you're working with clients, whether that's a, a, a couple or whether it's a magazine or an advertiser, getting the shot is extremely important and getting the shot they expect, getting the shot that uh, captures the event is, is extremely important. And this applies to a certain extent with street photography as well. Uh, if you're trying to capture um, actual people in motion, people living their everyday lives or moving about the city, you want to capture things as they happen. You, be, you want to be prepared and ready to capture those things. In those scenarios, there is a, such a thing as a good photo and a bad photo or a better photo and, and an even better photo. This video, along with a lot of stuff I shoot and a lot of the stuff I talk about, is about another completely separate category of photography. There's photography for clients and for advertising and, and, and for wildlife and sports. And then there's what I like to do. And some may call it just being a hobbyist, being a weekend warrior, being a dabbler. Whatever the title is, I don't really care. Uh, I like to use the medium of photography to create visually interesting photographs. Sometimes they can be of people and be of moments, uh, capturing life and capturing moments. And sometimes they can be of inanimate objects that might seem boring to most people. And this video is about encouraging you to embrace some of those boring photos, some of those mundane photos that seem like throwaways, seem like photos that you might delete when you call through a selection of, of, of photos. There's a lot of reasons to embrace a quote unquote boring photograph or to embrace some of the mundane things around you that you don't think were photo worthy. I'm gonna give you four reasons on why you should embrace the boring in your photography. Reason number one is practicing your craft. This category is pretty broad and it has a lot of subcategories to it. Uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of the aspects of practicing your craft that I've thought about that apply to these situations. One is learning the tool that you have, learning the camera that you have, becoming a master at your uh, chosen tool. Shooting as many photos as you can, whether it's shooting birds in flight or whether it's shooting the coffee sitting in your coffee cup in the morning. Um, every time you compose a shot and just click that shutter, uh, you're learning your camera, you're getting more used to the camera. It's becoming a little more uh, a part of you every single time. So getting some reps in to really get to know your camera is extremely beneficial. And you don't need to wait for special moments, live events or whatever to do this. You can really uh, get to know your camera every single day and shooting whatever you can find around your house and where you live. Everything else under practicing your craft falls within the general idea of photography and practicing all the aspects of it, whether that's composition, studying light, studying uh, contrast, studying color, studying exposure. All these things uh, play into a, a, a compelling or good photograph or even obviously are also boring photographs. So every time, just like with learning the camera, every time you uh, click the shutter, you're practicing composing a shot. You're practicing using the light, working with the light, working against the light. You're, you're seeing different exposures. You're seeing how different light affects different textures and different materials. 
you can learn something from every photograph and if you pr approach it with that mindset, whenever you take a photo that seems boring, you can still learn something from it. What kind of light is, 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 is in the photo, what direction it's coming from, what, what's interesting or not interesting about your composition and how can you change that next time or how could you have done it differently this time to make that photo of even a simple object more interesting. There's an infinite amount of possibilities and in, an infinite amount of ways to look at a photograph, any, any photograph, to analyze it for yourself and to take what you've learned from analyzing your own photo and applying it next time. And this can be done and should be done with any photo you can take around your house or in your neighborhood, wherever you live, you can practice these principles and analyze the work and improve your work going forward. Reason number two. So as you're walking around your house, or walking around your neighborhood or wherever you live and ta you're taking these photos that may seem boring of inanimate objects, of random things you see. As you do this and as you take the photos and bring them home and look at them, at some point this may lead you down a path where you find a photo project that you're passionate about. Uh, you may discover a photo project that you would have never thought about before. You may end up finding some themes that will work on a small or large photo project. The act of creating, the act of doing, sometimes will lead you down paths that you, couldn't, you wouldn't think of otherwise. This happened to me in, in uh, 2017 to 2019 as I was just exploring more and more random city and street photography. Not street photography, the traditional sense, but just photos of uh, random things around the city that I would, as I would drive around or walk around. As I was doing this, I, I, I recognized that I was drawn to the parts of my city that had gone through a lot of change and some that were, some parts that were run down from uh, the recession of, of, of 2008 that still hadn't been Im improved or repaired. And I, I, as I started to notice that a lot of my pictures were of things reflecting that, I, I started to create a photo project for that, uh, for those parts of the city, and I wouldn't have, wouldn't have discovered that idea without just shooting and then looking at my photos and recognizing themes or patterns that led me to ideas for photo projects. So take as many, when you take as many photos as you can of whatever you think is even remotely interesting, you might find yourself uh, embracing a theme or a photo project that you wouldn't have thought out otherwise. Number three is an interesting one for me because this is something uh, I noticed going through my old family photos as well is that any photo you take now, whether it's on your phone or, or, or your uh, mirrorless camera or DSLR, is documenting a moment in time. And that's extremely important. And that sounds obvious. And I think everyone might just say, duh, that's, that's exactly what photography is mostly for. But I think if you think about it in that aspect where you're documenting a moment in time, I think you can, uh, you can learn to embrace photos that you may not think were a big deal. Uh, for example, photos that I have in my library that are before 2007 don't have a lot of people using smartphones on them. I know they were around before iPhones, but it really wasn't until the iPhone and Android phones came around where, where you started to see people on their phones all the time when you're shooting street photography and those things. But any photo, a lot of the photos I have before that time frame automatically look just a little different. There's something a little bit different compared to today. And one aspect of that is that people aren't on their phones all the time. Now back then, I wouldn't have been able to predict that difference, to predict that, that societal change. But as I look back in photos, I can see that. And who knows what changes we will see in the near future that, that will have that same impact. So any photo you take now, whether it's just of your friends, whether it's a selfie, whether it's just a, a, a photo of a crowd at an event, that's instantly documenting what, it, what life was like in 2023 or a few years ago, as what life was like in 2020, for example. You'll, you'll never know until later that something you captured holds some sort of value or historical value, even if it's small, even if it's historical value for you personally. Maybe it's because five years from now, you'll live in a different place that you didn't predict. 
and that you'll look back and you'll have photos of the place you're currently living. But if you keep in mind that every photo you take is documenting a place and time, whether that's with your personal life, whether that's with your city or neighborhood, or, or whether it's a, a larger picture, like uh, the impact that smartphones have had or the impact that COVID had, you never know the time capsule that you're creating with that photo. And so that should give you some more freedom to take boring photos or to take photos that you know won't won't be awarded the best street photography photo or won't be you know lauded on on social media as amazing street photography take some photos that seem boring that seem street forward that just seem simple uh, even if you don't celebrate them right away keep them file them away and then revisit them six months to a year to five to ten years down the road and you might look at them in a different light the fourth reason is kind of a culmination of the other ones in that the more photos you take, boring or not, you will get closer and closer to the amazing photos. You'll get closer and closer to the great photos or to the photos that um, have a immediate visual impact. The more photos you take, the more boring photos you take, I'm confident you will get closer and closer to creating your best work. And you get closer and closer to creating fantastic, visually stunning photographs that stand alone. Oftentimes we romanticize the role of 24 exposures or the role of 36 exposures in terms of film photography. And we romanticize the idea that it slows you down and you're more thoughtful and all of these things. And in today's world of film photography, that's certainly true. That's where we're at because of the cost of, of a roll of film. It is better to be thoughtful and to not randomly fire them off. But if you go back and study film, if you, if you go back and study photographers from 30, 40, 50 years ago, when photography was only film photography and there was no differ differentiation, you'll find there was more photographers than you think that shot a lot, a lot of images in order to capture what they wanted to capture. They went through iterations of photographs, whether it was on one roll or whether they've revisited a location multiple times. Repetition and, and uh, iteration and, con and continuing to work and create was extremely important. And that hasn't changed. Fortunately, we have digital photography along with film photography nowadays. So even if it's just your smartphone, uh, getting those reps in shooting as much as you can shoot, shooting the boring stuff will help you create, uh, capture the, the more compelling stuff even better. So capturing the boring stuff will lead you to the great stuff. And if you stop filtering yourself before you even click the shutter, if you stop filtering what you think is good or what you think will look cool, before you even click the shutter, if you just start shooting and keep shooting and keep creating, something will, some things will start to happen. You'll start to find themes. You'll start to uh, find projects. You'll start to develop a better photographic eye. You'll find your own photography style and you'll figure out what photography means to you. Maybe you'll figure out that you do wanna shoot sports and wildlife or weddings or portraits or street photography, but you're not gonna figure that out by avoiding uh, shooting something because it's not compelling or it's not exciting or because you think it's boring or not a keeper. The more you shoot, the more likely you are to find out these answers to the questions that we all have as, as creative people and photographers. What style do we like? What themes do we like to shoot? What projects do we want to create? What, what, what category of photography do we even want to pursue? But just as important as it is to keep shooting the boring photos, it's equally as important to analyze and to view and review the photos that you shoot on a regular basis. This process of shooting and reviewing and analyzing and then improving this iterative process that happens in all these other fields applies really well to photography. You shoot, analyze, and improve what you shoot. And as you do that, it, you alone will make yourself better. So that analyzation process, that review process is extremely important to, to make your boring photos impact uh, mean something, and to give them a you know it gives them the value that they can have. And this theme or idea of embracing the boring photo is also all is also about experimentation and experimentation and pushing yourself, 
releasing yourself of any any perceived boundaries or definitions of what, of what photography is. Release yourself of any definition of what you think street photography is. Um, just go start shooting, whether it has people in there or whether it's a, the, the corner of a building or the tire of a car, whatever it is. Release yourself of all these preconceived definitions and ideas and, and start shooting. I think that's, that's like the, the, the key takeaway, I would say, of this video, is to release yourself of of expectations and definitions and just shoot. But keep shooting the boring stuff because it will lead you to the great stuff. All right guys, thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this video, please give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't. I also invite you to join my YouTube memberships. Check those out. I, uh, I'm gonna be doing some cool things to let some people behind the scenes of what's going on with my projects. And that's it for now guys. Thanks again as always for watching and I'll talk to you soon.